Good morning. Uh, today we are going to go over the best practices for setting up your own Google AdWords account. Uh, this is just a basic overview of everything that you should do when first setting up the account. And at the end, we will go over how to optimize the account and how to look at a few data points so that you can get as many leads as possible at the lowest cost per lead. Uh, so again, it's just going to be a general overview of account setup and some basic optimization towards the end. And um, then we will, um, I will always be available for any questions or comments. Um, and you can reach out to me at Kendra at realgeeks.com or 808-226-6332. And I do manage our real leads department over here at Real Geeks. I also have Victoria on the phone and she is our um, Google partner. And Victoria, if you just wanted to introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, my name is Victoria Fabiano, and I work at Google. Currently, I'm a strategic partner manager, so I partner with amazing partners like Real Geeks to help them uh, optimize, be ahead of the curve, uh, know about betas, and all really cool stuff that's going on at Google. So once again, so excited that you are tuning in to hear Kendra and I talk about um, AdWords setup and optimization. Great, so we'll just go ahead and um, go over the basic tenets of AdWords to start, and then I will walk you through a example account setup. Um, and we'll go over things like linking the AdWords account to your analytics account and adding the conversion code and all of that. Um, so first, just the basic tenets of AdWords. Um, there's five really basic components um, when setting up the AdWords account that you'd want to be aware of. Uh, the first is the keywords that you're using. So you want to make sure that your keywords are very relevant. So if I was going after Honolulu Homes for Sale, for example, that might be a keyword phrase that I'd want to bid on. Um, and we'll go over some different keyword types in a little bit. And then um, I'd want the keywords to match the text ads that I would create. So that's the second component. So I would want my text ad to read something like search all homes for sale in Honolulu. Uh, just to make sure that you're really qualifying the traffic that is clicking on your ads, because that, of course, is where your budget goes, uh, which is a, the third component, the budget that you would be spending at Google. Uh, you want to spend enough so you can acquire enough data to analyze you know, how the account is performing, get enough daily clicks uh, so that you can you know, really track how everything is doing over a you know, weekly or monthly basis. Um, this, the fourth Tenant is the landing pages that you're using. So we suggest testing, you know, use landing searchers on an area page as well as a search results page to see which one converts better over time. And finally, the fifth component is targeting. So if I'm targeting Honolulu Homes for Sale, I might set up a local campaign targeting just the state of Hawaii, as well as a, a national campaign targeting you know, the United States, or if I wanted to only focus on buyers from California, say that's really popular in this market, I could set up a campaign based towards um, those searchers as well. Uh, all of those play into your quality score. There are other components that do play into quality score uh, called the big three, and that is your ad relevance, which we kind of touched on, how relevant the ad is to the keywords being searched. Uh, the CTR, which is your click-through rate, and that's how many times someone actually clicks on your ad compared to the number of impressions or views it gets on a search results page and the landing page experience. And our sites are highly optimized. So landing page experience uh, is pretty, pretty good, uh, especially if you set up the website, you know, how Jeff recommends that you do. Or if you use a site builder or anything like that, they are all very uh, familiar with how the sites are best set up and how they work. Uh, so all of those, keep all of those in mind as well when first setting up your website and the AdWords account. Um, yeah, and Kendra, one one thing to add there. So as you guys know, as Kendra just said, that the big three are really important: relevance, the CTR, and the landing page experience. Remember, those are um, the, there's real time evaluations of those components um, for the ad auction, but your quality at score um, itself is not. So speaking generally, when those three components aren't working well, you just need to take action to improve them. And through this, web, um, through this webinar, Kendra will really talk about optimizing those three and the best way to do that. Great. So yeah, so we'll just jump into creating a test account. I'm going to use one of Jeff's websites and just walk you through the best practices in initially setting the account up. So for this here, I'm in the account Hawaii. 
Manson. Uh, select the country, so United States, or I do actually have some Canadian accounts as well, and then select the time zone. Uh, these, the time zone and the currency are very important because once they've been selected, you can't change them. So just make sure that you have it set to the correct time zone and the correct currency, uh, and then go ahead and create the account. So done, so now I'll go to the new account. All right, so the first step is to create your first campaign. There's a hierarchy in AdWords, so it goes account level, campaign level, and then ad groups, and then keywords. Um, so we'll be creating the, the campaign and then kind of drill down from there. So the first thing I do is I select search network only. Uh, you can do you know, display network, you could do search with display. Uh, we typically just do search, uh, and that ties into the user intent. So if someone's going to Google and typing in Honolulu homes for sale, they're actively searching for the services that you offer, which already makes them a pretty qualified searcher and is the kind of traffic you'd like to attract to your site. So I typically do search network only, and then I select all features. And then I'll go ahead and name this campaign local. Uh, again, I typically turn off the search partners. I really only want to show on the search network for this campaign. Uh, that's also going to, you know, be play, played into your budget. So if you have additional budget to spend, you could advertise on the search partners. Uh, if you're starting with a lower budget, say $500, $750, I would go ahead and turn that off just so all of your money is going towards the search network. Since this is a local campaign, I'm going to go ahead and um, do an advanced search for my targeting options. So there are different levels. Um, you could search by state, so I could include the state of Hawaii here if I wanted. Uh, you could also do a radius. So say I wanted to do 20 miles around Honolulu. I could do that and search, and it'll show me you know, the radius uh, outline and the limits that it would reach. So if I wanted to do that, or you could also do city level. So if I just wanted to target the city of Honolulu, I could go ahead and add that and then it'll show you again the, uh, the boundaries of that targeting. Say I wanted to exclude an area. So I wanted to only target Honolulu but exclude the island of Maui. I could type that in and then hit exclude and that would keep the ads from showing in that particular region. Uh, so you can really get pretty um, specific with your targeting and in cities like DC or San Francisco, I know that there are certain areas that you might not want to appear. So you can use the exclude option to really uh, make your targeting very specific to the types of leads you're looking for. Go ahead and hit done. For location options advanced, I always go in here and select people in my targeted location. So your ads will only show to the people in your selected targeting. So in this instance, it would show for everyone on the islands of uh, Kauai, Oahu, and Hawaii Island because I excluded Maui County. Uh, so you just want to make sure that people within those targeting boundaries are the only ones who can see your ad. Same thing here, if you wanted to you know, exclude people in that excluded location, you'd go ahead and select that option. Okay, so for the bid strategy, we typically here at Real Geeks do manual CPC because we're managing the accounts for our clients. Uh, if you wanted to do automated, um, that's when Google would go in and automate the bids based on the search position and, and all of that. Um, so there's some different options for your bidding. We do manual. Um, just because I'm actively managing the accounts on a day-to-day -day basis. And then for the budget, you would just spend put the amount that you'd like to spend per day on this particular campaign. So if you're going to be setting up two campaigns, make sure you divide the total daily spend that you'd like to use by each campaign. Ad extensions, uh, I typically set this up later, so I'll go over that with you uh, in, a, in, a, in a bit, um, but you could also set it up here. The only other thing I do when first setting up a campaign is the ad scheduling. So within the local campaign, I typically set up a custom schedule. Uh, so say that Jeff only wants to work 
on, you know, follow up on these leads Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. I'd go ahead and set that so the ads would only be eligible to show on weekdays during, you know, business hours. Uh, if you wanted to include weekends or, you know, make a really custom schedule like Saturday from, you know, noon to 4 p.m., um, you could go ahead and do that. And then your ads would only appear for the local campaign at those times. So once you have all of that, you can go ahead and save and continue. And that will take you now to the ad group level if. Oh, it's overlapping, so I'll go ahead and remove that and then save and continue. And now we're at your at the creation of your first ad group. Um, before I go on, did you have anything to add to the campaign setup, Victoria? Um, no, pretty much you can, well, yes. <laughs> As Kendra explained, <laughs> you, there are so many different ways that you can approach um, setting up your, your campaign, uh, the, the geographies, you can get extremely granular. Um, and obviously with the scheduling, you can, once you launch the campaign, you can go ahead and as, as Kendra does because she goes into the campaigns every day, she will optimize to make sure that your ads are serving at the most optimal times and then perhaps turn them off at when, they're, when it's the least optimal time so you can save budget. So as you can see through this interface, um, we, we make it here at Google really easy um, to optimize your budget and really connect to consumers um, when they want your ads. Great. Yeah, and I will show you how to view all of that um, when we're going through, you know, optimizing account towards the end. So, great. Um, so, now you're going to create your first ad group. So, I've been using the example Honolulu Homes for Sale, so I'll go ahead and keep on that trend. And so you're going to create your first text ad. You could do a text ad. You could do a dynamic search ad, which will pull, you know, some content from your website. Uh, I typically start with the text ads and then go in and add some other types of ads later. Um, so Honolulu Homes for Sale. Let's spell that correctly. And I'm really trying to make the content in this text ad relevant. So the keyword list is very going to very closely match the text in this text ad, uh, and that you know plays back into one of the the big three, the um, the ad relevance, just to really make your quality score as high as it possibly can be. And the better your quality score is, the better position you'll get in AdWords, um, or excuse me, on the search results page. And the, you know, the lower your average cost per click will be. So it's all uh, very important when setting this up to make sure that it's, it's super relevant and trying to get that quality score as high as possible. So, okay. So for the display URL, this is the URL that would show here um, in the text ad. So I'll go ahead and use, let's see this one because it has Oahu and Honolulu in it. So I'll put that in the display URL. And then I will actually use that as a landing page as well, uh, just to see how this page converts since it is, you know, designating the island of Oahu, the metro section, which includes Honolulu. And it's pulling in some different um, Honolulu featured properties at the bottom. For URL options, this is something that we've added on uh, fairly recently. You can actually track some of the, the keywords that are resulting in the clicks and signups for you. So what you would need to do is copy this final URL. Make sure you have HTTP colon slash slash. Include that URL. And then for the area page, the code is question keyword equals bracket keyword. This will, when you connect your AdWords account to your Google Analytics account, this will actually feed the keyword information into your lead manager because we pull that from analytics. So we'll go over connecting AdWords to analytics um, towards the end. And then in the lead manager, you'd be able to see which keywords actually resulted in a sign up for you. So it's important to add this code to the, the tracking template URL, which is under the add URL options advanced section. 
Okay, so we want to make these keywords as relevant as possible for this specific ad group. There are three different keyword types that we typically use, the first being exact match, which is designated by brackets. So Honolulu homes for sale. Let's see, houses for sale in Honolulu. Uh, so you just want to make those very relevant to the ad group that we're creating. The second is phrase match. So that's designated by a quotation mark. So again, Honolulu homes for sale. And what phrase match means is that phrase has to be included in the search query. So say someone types in Honolulu homes for sale 96813. Since that phrase is in there and they just added a zip code on towards the end, that will still trigger your ad to show. And then finally, the third type we use is broad match modified, which each keyword has a plus mark in front of it. So if I wanted to do this, these three keywords have to be included in that search query as well. So kind of the same thing if someone typed in homes for sale in Honolulu, Hawaii uh, by Diamond Head. Since it has Honolulu homes and sale in that search query, it would still trigger your ad to show. I'd be a little careful with the broad match modified because it can still match to a bunch of searches that might not be super relevant. Um, and that's something that you can keep an eye on as the data starts coming into your account as well. So now you'll go down here and set your default bid. I typically start around $2 and then set up billing later just so we can set up a few more ad groups and ads. And Kendra, I'm going to hop in here for a second mm -hmm. um, regarding keywords. So um, pretty much is really important to think about all the different types of queries that someone would ask exactly like you were going over the different variations, um, the different vocabulary consumers will type into Google. Um, and really keywords are both an art and a science. There's obviously keywords that you should be covering, and then there's other ones that you'll find out through time um, and through going through your reporting um, that people are, you know, words that people are using. You know, a pro tip is that, you know, phrase and exact match types expand to cover close keyword variations. So usually you don't have to create a ton of keywords um, uh, that are similar to each other uh, because our AdWords uh, front end is, is smart enough to, to um, understand the minute variations of the different, um, of different keyword searches. Um, but yeah. Right. Um, so when you first create these, if the um, status says below first page bid, it will give you that warning. So you can go in and adjust the, the bid at a keyword level. So say I wanted to make this one 250. I could go ahead and adjust that, and then that keyword would have a higher bid. So if you wanted to really focus on a specific area or anything like that, you could set the bids a little bit higher for that particular city or neighborhood uh, just so you can try to get a little bit higher position or higher visibility for that again, that area. All right, so I spoke a little bit before about testing two different landing pages. So once I have my keyword list in here, I will go back to the ads tab and create my second ad. So I'll keep the ad copy the same for now just because I want to, te to test how the different landing pages are performing. So you'll need to update both the final URL and the tracking template, but you can keep the display URL the same. As long as the display URL is showing the correct core URL, uh, you can put you know, relevant keywords after this just to make the ad a little bit more um, appealing to that searcher. But for this, I'm gonna go ahead and do a search. So yeah, I'm just gonna keep the all neighborhood. And I'm just gonna do homes. I don't want any condos or land to appear because they typically they specifically typed in Honolulu homes for sale. So I'm gonna do a search. And then over here I always sort by newest just because you know that house that was on the highest um, section was $18 million, and I'm assuming that that's gonna be sitting on the market for a while. So I constantly want the uh the feed to be refreshing, um, just so that it's showing different price ranges, it's showing the newest properties, uh, just it makes it a better user experience. So then I'll go ahead and copy this URL, go ahead and paste it in here, 
And then for the tracking template, instead of a question mark for the search results page, it's an ampersand. So ampersand keyword equals keyword. And again, that will pull in that keyword data into your lead manager so you can see which keyword resulted in that sign up. Go ahead and save that. And then you have your two text ads. So over time, you'll see how many clicks each one's generated, how many um, impressions, and then once we add in the conversion code, how many signups each one got for your account. Okay, so you would keep doing that for all of the different ad groups that you wanted to include in your account. So if you wanted to go after Honolulu condos for sale, uh, if you wanted to include Kahala homes for sale or some different neighborhoods, you'd go through that same process for each of those ad groups. So now for the local campaign, I'm gonna go back to the settings tab and just go over a few more settings that weren't available to um, set up when we first set up the campaign. So devices. We used to turn off mobile. Uh, now we've been doing a lot of testing with keeping mobile on and then just watching how it performs over time. Our sites are fully mobile optimized and we are seeing a greater and greater shift towards mobile searches being performed. So what I would recommend is keeping an eye on how the mobile device performs and then making adjustments as needed based on the data that's coming through. So say that you have a limited budget and you just you see that computers is converting at a much higher level than the mobile devices is. If you wanted to test turning off mobile or just decreasing the bids, you'd go ahead and come in here and decrease by, you know, 100% would turn it off completely. If you wanted to decrease it by 50%, that would lower your bid by 50%, so you'd be spending a bit less per click. Uh, so you can come in here and play around with the, the mobile settings. Um, same thing if you see mobile devices are performing much better than computers and tablets. You can go ahead and increase and put, you know, 50% more towards your mobile bids than the other devices. Uh, just It just depends on how your account is performing and the data that you're seeing coming through. So this is where you would go in and change that. Okay, and the other section um, in that we want to go over is in the keywords tab. It's called negative keywords. So especially in the real estate space, there are some negative keywords that you always want to include in your account. Say that you don't want to focus on commercial properties or you don't want to deal with uh, rentals you would go ahead and type those in your negative keywords and that would be at the campaign level. So you wouldn't have to do it for each ad group. Um, this means that if someone went to Google and typed in you know, commercial properties for sale in Honolulu, your ad would not appear because that's a negative keyword in your campaign. And it just really protects your budget from irrelevant clicks because you don't wanna be spending your budget on something that you know, on a service that you don't offer or don't want to focus on. Um, so you just add in all the negative keywords there that you would like to, you know, keep your ad from showing up for. All right, so I'll go ahead and save that. Once you have your local campaign, uh, I mentioned towards the beginning of the call that we normally set up two campaigns. So you can go back and um, set, set up the national campaign. Let me just refresh this here. The national campaign, again, typically is targeted towards the, um, the country, unless you'd like to you know, only target the West Coast, for example, or just target um, you know, a specific state that gets a lot more buyers for you normally. Um, so go ahead and get back in here. So once you're on the All Campaigns tab, you can come back down here and click Search Network Only. So you're creating your second campaign, all features, national. And I pretty much set up everything the same way except for the targeting. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and include the, you, the entire country. And then again, just people within the United States. You set your budget, so I'll go ahead and do $10 again. And then for the ad scheduling, typically I'll leave this one on 24 hours a day because the country spans so many different time zones. But again, if you're not going to be following up on the leads right away or you just really want to focus on you know, following up on leads from 8 to 5, 
Monday through Friday, go ahead and set that um, just because the quicker you're able to follow up with the leads, the more likely they are to convert. Uh, so just make sure that you're able to, you know, really get in contact with those leads pretty quickly. Um, we also do have, you know, the automated emails that go out and the automated texts if you're signed up for that system. Um, so if you're not able to get to it right away, you could always set those up as well. Or again, just make sure that the ads are only running when you're able to get on the phone pretty quickly. All right. So, so adding, so, yeah. So adding a national campaign is definitely a way to grow volume and to get more leads, as as Kendra mentioned. Um, another way is also setting more aggressive bids with higher quality ads that can drive volume on your existing keywords as well. So obviously, having an evergreen national campaign on is very very important. But there are definitely other ways to um, drive volume as well. Great. Yeah. And I have some uh, clients who are running local only because they just want to focus on people who are within their area. I have some clients who are running national only. And sometimes those leads convert at a higher rate because they're not already working with a real estate agent in the area, for example. So it really just depends on, again, the types of leads you're looking for, the volume, and all of those different factors. All right, so here I make the keywords a bit more specific because I really want to qualify the traffic. Uh, as far as I'm aware, there's only one Honolulu in the country, but you just never know. <laughs> so I always include HI or Hawaii in this in the keyword query. So same thing here. So I'm going to include the HI in the text ad because that's going to match a lot of the keywords that I'm going to include in this campaign. Again, just making it really relevant to the keywords that we're bidding on. So. so the same thing here, I'm going to do the tests for the pages. Add in my tracking URL. And then again, the search terms here. Just want to um, include the state abbreviation and the state name just to really qualify the traffic since a lot of it will be coming from outside of the state. I have a bunch of different you know, other keywords that I would add in. I'm just using these as an example, but again, houses for sale, home listings, you know, any of those are good keywords to include. Go ahead and set the default bid again. And there you go. That's the first ad group for your national. Again, I would go back in here, add my second text ad. Just get rid of these two, perform that search sort type today <laughs> all right now it's important to note that we would need to go back in and add the negative keywords for this campaign uh, because it's added at a campaign level so I don't want to focus on commercial properties. I don't want to focus on rentals or leases. Um, I don't want to focus on industrial. Um, so just make sure you add in all of those that might trigger the ad to show if performed with like a phrase match or a broad match keyword. Um, and then the same thing for the mobile. Um, it's going to be tracked per campaign. So just make sure that you keep an eye on how it's performing here as well so that you can optimize it effectively. All right. So once these are done, um, I typically go back in and add the ad extensions. You can do this at the beginning. You can do it as you go. This is just kind of the routine that I use. Um, so you would click on the campaign name here and go to ad extensions. There are two different extensions that we typically use. The first is call out extensions. And I add this at the campaign level because it's it's they're call outs for your business. So you don't have to get super granular with these. 
So you'd go in and select call out extensions and add extension. And then these would be little bullet points that you'd want to use to highlight your business. So, you know, something like local real estate experts or, um, you know, Hawaii, Hawaii real estate experts, if that were to fit. I don't think, I think that's one character over, but um, financing available if you're working with a lender or something on your site. Um, so once those are in there, you would save. And those would be two call out extensions that you would see on your ads. The next one I do is site link extensions. So this would be the links below your ad that would highlight maybe different pages on your website. Um, and it's just a really good way to show, you know, everything that your website has to offer. So one that I use a lot is free home valuation. So for this one, we have our seller leads tool on the site. So if you wanted to try and attract some seller leads as well, you could use this put that in there and then here again you would have to add that tracking template because if someone clicked on this link you would still want to know what keyword prompted them to click over to your website so save that in there and then save so then you'll be able to track how this is performing as well um, so if you have featured properties or You'd, really, you'd like to send someone to the sold search or you have a market report on your page or a property landing page, anything that you'd really like to highlight, you can constantly be updating these site links with those to promote those pages as well. And one thing to know about extensions and ad extensions in general is, um, you know, let's say Kendra said, you know, I, I added all the site links, I added these call out extensions, and you go and Google your ad and you don't see every single one of those extensions showing. Um, one thing to really know is that there are Extensions are automatically chosen based on several factors, including, you know, previous performance, user context, and especially available space. So they may not always show every single time, um, but they are definitely there in the system, and when they're able to show, they will, they will go up. Um, site links are incredibly, incredibly valuable because it really allows um, the person searching to go directly to where they want to go on the site. So like Hendra said, the valuation tool or things like that, they only have to click once and they go directly to that page instead of having to click three or four times once they get to your site. Yep, and we've been tracking some ad extensions that we've been using, and they're all performing very well. Uh, so this is incredibly valuable and something I would recommend for every account. All right, so um, I do that on the ad group level because I'll sometimes change up the extension based on the keywords in that, uh, that particular ad group. You could do it at a campaign level as well. It just wouldn't be as granular. Um, but again, that's your preference, and you just keep an eye on that and see how they're all performing. So once you have all of that set up, uh, it's really, really important to add the conversion code to your website. Otherwise, you won't know, you know how many signups you're actually getting from this account. And that's probably one of the most important metrics when reviewing how everything is, you know, each keyword and text ad and everything is performing. Um, so to do that, you'd come up here to the top to the Tools tab and then click on Conversions. Right, so you would do this add conversion button. And we're going to be tracking on a website. So go ahead and select that. And then, you know, name it whatever you'd like. I just typically do sign up. I don't assign a value because each market is different. That's more for e-commerce, in my opinion. Um, each, you know, each lead might be worth you know, anywhere from 200000 to a million dollars, you know, just depending on the properties you have available. Um, so I just don't assign a value. And I come down here and it is a sign up on the website. And I include yes. So leave everything else as is. And then save and continue. Once you're here, this is the code that you would need added to your site. Now, you can't actually add it, but the support team can. So come down here and copy this code and then go to 
realgeeks.com slash support. And then fill out this form. So I'll go ahead and do Kendra Leary. So here, this would be, I think it's website backend. Yeah, lead capture. So then just add conversion code put that in there and then send it over. And the support team is incredibly fast. Um, so they'll most likely get this added within, you know, at least a couple of hours. Um, if, you know, and at the latest, I mean, on the same business day, because all they have to do is add this into the back end of your site for you. I'm going to go ahead and not send this in just because this is a test account, but you would um, send that in and then they would notify you once it's been added to your site. Okay. So then we're done. And once that's in, once you get a lead, it will show as tracking. Um, this trips a few people up, but as soon as a lead comes through, it will be tracking the, the leads in the conversion code. When you come back here, you can also add in that second metric to your graphs, just so you can see, you know, leads or clicks versus leads or anything like that. So you just come down here to conversions and then converted clicks. And then once you start getting clicks and leads, you'll see the two line charts side by side. All right, the next step would be connecting your AdWords account to your Google Analytics. So I will go ahead and get in there. Come down here to this one, just to show a test. Okay, so you come over here to the admin section, and then in the middle, there's a section called AdWords linking. So you can go ahead and do that, add a new link group, and then select the account. You normally only have one. I just handle a lot because <laughs> you know, we have a lot of accounts. Um, so link that, turn that on, and go ahead and link the account. Now, you think you're done, um, but you actually have to come back into AdWords and finish the process in here. So you'd come over here and click on this cog in the upper right hand corner, go to account settings. And then over here on the left hand side, linked accounts, Google Analytics. Hmm. There we go. And then it'll show up here, so just edit, and then I import the site metrics, um, just because I think that's a better way to go, and then save that. And now they're, they're linked. So it'll show this account is linked to analytics. Um, this is really important because again, this is how we import that keyword data into your lead manager. So if a click came over and it'll say CPC in your lead manager, and then it'll say keyword Honolulu Homes for Sale. So you know what they were searching when they first clicked on your ad and then signed up on your website, which is just another piece of useful information to have when speaking to that lead. All right, once all of that's done, you're ready to um, input the billing information. So you, again, you come to this upper right-hand cog and then just click on billing. And it will take you to the billing setup. So United States, We'll enter the business name if you'd like, or if you're going to use an individual credit card, you just enter your name, and it's pretty um, pretty standard. You'd put your contact information in there, come down here, select your bank account or credit card, fill that out, check the box, and sign up, and you're ready to go. All right, so now we can go over a another account that has been live for quite a while. And I'll show you what I look at when optimizing an account. Just pretty pretty quickly, so I don't take up too much of your time, but this is the account we do quite a, quite a bit of testing as in, as you can see. <laughs> but um, I'll go ahead and take a look over here at 
let's see, let's just go to Eva condos for sale. This is another account of Jeff's. Um, so I'll go through here and see how the keywords are performing. Like this one is below a first page bid of 63 cents. So I'll go ahead and raise that to 75. Um, if there are any keywords that are spending a, a whole lot of money but aren't converting, I might go ahead and pause those. This one, I might raise the bid just to see how that performs. And I'll also take a look at, you know, the quality score over here. It just got really good quality scores. Eight, 10, eight, sixes. Maybe I'll take a look at that. Um, if there's anything I can do there. Let's take a look at one that might have a little bit more volume. Here we go. So Honolulu Homes for Sale. Go ahead and see how all of these are performing, the number of conversions, the quality score, the cost per conversion. All of those are, are metrics that I look at quite often um, just to see if there's anything that's really standing out. Like this one, Honolulu House is for sale. The cost per lead is $20, which is higher than a lot of them. So I might see you know, what is resulting in clicks since this is a phrase match keyword and go ahead and, and see if there are any changes I can make. So I'll select that keyword and go up here to search terms and see if there's maybe any negative keywords that I would need to add in, like cheap. That might be a negative keyword I would want to add in. Or let's see. Craigslist, you know, see how that's performing. Or um, there's another Craigslist. So it's getting a, a few hits for that. Uh, so I, if I wanted to go ahead and add that in as a negative keyword, I would just go over here, add a negative. So then that protects those from showing up in the future. Same thing for the ads. I would take a look and see which ad is converting at a higher level. This one has 50 conversions, this one has one. However, you have to look at also the number of clicks. Um, the cost per conversion for this one is $18 compared to 10 on average for this one. So I might go ahead and, and pause that ad just so all of the clicks are going towards this ad that's converting at a much higher level. Um, so I take a look at all of that and just keep making adjustments based on all of that data that comes through. The other thing I wanted to highlight is I will take a look at the mobile and see how that is doing. Looks like I had previously adjusted this. <laughs> we had been doing some testing. Um, it has a lot of conversions at about $9 per conversion. So it's doing pretty well compared to the cost for these. It is a bit higher, but $9 per lead is really, really great. Um, and we are spending higher bids you know, for that particular device. Um, and the average position is actually much higher as well. So it's getting him some great visibility. Um, so I'd probably keep that as is. I might lower that down to maybe 200 just to you know see how that does and, and keep an eye on it and see if that brings down the cost per conversion any. Um, but that's where you'd go in and make that change um, if you'd like to focus more on mobile or focus more on computers and tablets. All right. So there's a lot of data to really analyze in here. Again, this is a brief overview, um, but the main metrics I would look at would be the cost per conversion and the conversion rate. Um, something that's also really important for your quality score is your click-through rate. So you just wanna make sure that your keywords are matching your ads really well and that your CTR is high, you know, and that's based on the relevancy factor. All right, Victoria, do you have anything to add to optimizing the accounts? I mean, you covered a ton of it. As you mentioned, there is incredible amounts of data in AdWords, and you could spend hours optimizing. And that's why it's really, really important to know that you can't just set your campaign and forget it. Um, and working with someone like Kendra at Real Geeks is a way to make sure that you are spending your budget wisely, your ads are high quality, um, and that you're driving leads to your sites. Um, so this has been an excellent overview. And um, yeah, I think that this is just the beginning. There's so many more optimizations that can be done. 
and I'm sure there's another webinar that we could set up to go through those. Yep, that sounds great. Um, again, like Victoria mentioned, this was more of just a basic overview. If you're really advanced in AdWords, I'm, I'm sure you're aware of all the other functions and things that you can do within this you know, interface. Um, but if this, if you just are getting started and you want to properly set up an account based on your Real Geeks website, this is the way to go. This is how I set up initially set up all of our accounts and then just continue managing from there and use, you know, go deeper in and and use even more features um, that are a bit more on the advanced side. Um, but I would recommend setting it up based on how I just went through everything, and you'll be, you know, on your on your way to driving leads to your site. Uh, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me at Kendra at realgeeks.com. I am in Hawaii, so for most of you, there's probably a, a bit of a time difference, um, but I'm usually always available via email, and I'm pretty quick to respond. Um, so any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Otherwise, um, best of luck. All right, and thank you so much, Victoria, for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in.